Hey everyone and welcome to Joyfest Martin's Secret Recipe. If you are a fan of adventure games and you liked Monkey Island, I hope you will like this and without further ado, let's start the game. I pulled out my sword and sliced off its arm. The squid monster was raged and almost got me with a powerful blow that smashed the ship's floor less than three inches away from me. And I jumped up to my feet, preparing for the next attack. Wow, Joyfus. This seems like an awesome time and a thrilling adventure. So, where is your problem? You see, Joseph, this is my problem. I was not thrilled by what was going on at all. It had used to be awesome, but it wasn't anymore. Let me start by asking you this. What made you love the sea in the first place? Brushman Thronehood? Well, that's not exactly what I meant. What made you think that what Thronewood was doing was exceptionally awesome? New experiences, discovery of new places, and new things. Exactly. Fighting a giant squid would feel like the most awesome thing in the world when you do it the first time. When you keep fighting giant squids through five years on a daily basis, it, it just becomes boring. In fact, you'd likely even prefer peeling potatoes to that exercise. Not peeling potatoes, definitely. <laughs> right. Anyways... What you really need now is to take rest from your adventures for a while and indulge into a totally different experience. Keep doing that for a short while and your love for the sea adventures will be brand new in no time. Trust me. Hmm. You think? Oh, it's my ship calling me for my next adventure. I gotta go. See you later, my friend. <sighs> that adventurous boy, I knew I wouldn't convince him. That sharp old fellow, I knew he would convince me. If only he knew how blasé I am about sea adventures now. Believe it or not, this time it almost felt like peeling potatoes. Three months after our last meeting, I knew it was about time I listened to Joseph's advice and immersed myself into new activities different from touring the seas. Finally! The musty smell of my town's canteen, after a long period of absence. Why is the place so quiet like this? Have you heard of the incident at James's farm? What happened? James woke up this morning only to find that all of his cows' tails were gone. Good lord! And who's done that? The culprit is yet to be discovered. The cows are lucky to belong to a breed that regrow their tails. But poor James has now lost the season's harvest, and will have to wait for a little while before his cows regrow their tails back again. So we are in William's Tavern. If we move, this guy will well, talk, well, to, talk to us, Simon. Here. Ah, Simon, so you're back. Back since a fortnight? What kept you so long? Don't tell me you lost your way in the sea again. Sorry to disappoint you, but nothing like that happened. We were simply enjoying the sail. Come on now, sea lover. Don't make it sound like you're so desperate to set sail again. What? I have no idea what you're talking about. You don't? Sorry, Joyfus, but I don't think so. I already had a quick conversation with the captain of your ship a moment ago, and it didn't seem like he was expecting you on his ship the next time he sails which must be happening pretty soon. You never missed a chance to roam the seas before. What's going on, Joyfus? Do you think it's very important for you to know? Besides, being here for two weeks in a row, it's pretty clear that you missed your ship as well. Huh, <laughs> you're smarter than you look, aren't you? You're right, I think I've had enough sailing lately, so I decided to take some time off for now. So, I guess we'll be seeing a lot of each other's faces, whether we like it or not. Until then, ciao. So now we can talk to William. Hello, William. Hey. So, what have you got for me today? 
we have your favorite food on today's menu, fish and shrimp meal. Very funny. Why, it is funny. You're a man that spends most of his life on the seas, and you still can't eat seafood. Good for you ships nowadays carry loads of potatoes, or else we might see you helping James and his farm instead of roaming the seas. What happened? Where is everybody? This place used to look like a bee's nest, but now it's freaking dead. What's the matter? Ah, I almost forgot you'd been absent for quite a while now. It all started when Chef Martin, the former cook of this restaurant... You know Chef Martin, don't you? Well? Okay, I guess it's quite obvious that you absolutely have no clue. You should have known that it was Martin who kept these people coming to this island all that time. Ah, you see, here's the thing. Martin's not here anymore. He relocated to Kanta Island nearly two months ago. He says he can't be away any longer from what has become the new center of kitchen art. And with him, did our former visitors and tourists also shift their interests to Kanta away from our town? Exactly. I'm pretty sure we'll all be seeing many familiar faces leaving this place for good now that it has lost its value. Even I'm thinking about finding a better job on another island. What is it with the robbery at James's farm people are talking about? James woke up this morning to find his cow's tails were all gone. Somebody stole them, of course. The cow's tails will regrow back in the near future, but poor James has lost his season's harvest. You know, if something like this happened two or more months ago, we'd accuse the foreigner of doing it. But since no strangers are coming around to this island anymore, the thief has to be one of us. I really wish to, but last time I did, he told me that jokes cease to be funny if heard more than nine times. That's it for now. All right. So let's start examining the things here. If we try to take the oil. Nice Mediterranean touch. William what am not, I supposed to do with him? Uh, let us anyway. So let's examine the things around here. And this way we will open the dialogue options. Seems like an announcement for an important event. Seems like an announcement for an... Here's another ad that fell from the ad board. It seems like a piece from a newspaper. I'll keep it. So let's check the inventory. We, we got two items. It says the grand cooking contest hosted by Chef Martin. Location, Kanta Island. Date, July 5th. Oh, here's something to immerse myself into as Joseph advised. But the deadline is tight. I only have until the end of today to prepare my stuff and set off to Kanta Island if I'm to catch the contest in time. What survives from this side is a natural predicted event. It says that we're going to have a full sun eclipse on... Wait! Isn't that today's date? It says that the eclipse is going to happen today at 4.17 p.m. Cool! And let's check the other things. This is the only frame that doesn't have any picture in it. I wonder why. What am I supposed to... William's collection of concept art pictures. A small yellow note with some handwriting on it. William's collection of con... Uh-uh. He won't let me take it. Well, let's take the folding knife. I think Mr. Joseph told me to stay away from adventures for... This is a folding knife that could help me cut the recipe's vegetables. So I will surely take... We don't have the recipe yet, but anyway, let's talk to William. Hello, William. Hey. Say, William, having worked with Chef Martin in the same kitchen for quite a while, you must have learned some of his best recipes, right? And you expect me to give that to you simply because it's your request, huh? I don't think you fully understand the real value of Martin's secrets yet. It's true that Martin often gives lectures on cooking, but that only applies to recipes that are already commonly known. He never divulges secrets of original recipes developed by him. 
I myself was never made privy to any of his secrets. The best I got from him was how to cook according to a dozen of common recipes and a copy of the Cooking Encyclopedia. Wait, did you just say Cooking Encyclopedia? Yep, signed by Chef Martin himself. I hope you wouldn't mind if I borrow it for some time. Well, geez, what's all the sudden interest in a cooking book? Look, I'm just sick of canned tuna. Don't even try to pull the wool over my eyes. I know you're not in quite good terms with fish or any other seafood, as a matter of fact, Joyfest. Okay, here it is, William. I'm applying for the cooking contest. Are you now? The one to be held in Canta Island? Ha, ah, that's a good one. I almost believed you. Ah, not a chance, Joyfest. Why does one of your picture frames not have a picture in it? I'm keeping it for the concept art picture from the booth. Did you see the games booth to your left when you leave the restaurant? That's where I found it. It's a stunning concept art picture for the mighty tentacle master from the day of the octopus. To get it, the owner offered me a challenge. The challenge was build me a pyramid of cards and the picture is yours, he said, but I could never make it. Every time I'm thinking I'm just about to finish and win, the cards suddenly collapse and I have no idea how that happens. Seems like an easy challenge to me. Well, if that's the case, why don't you go and try for yourself? I bet I will make it from the first time. Oh, really? And what if I do and bring you the picture? In that case, you get whatever you ask for. Let it be the cooking encyclopedia. I see we're playing dirty, huh, Joy Fest? Fine, bring me that picture and the book is yours. For a little while, at least. Consider it done. So we've got the first uh, int. We have to win the contest. Nice drawings! What are they about? Uh, what, Joyfest? You don't mean to tell me you already forgot my fine collection of concept art already? These pictures mark the beginning of history. Just imagine that the greatest adventure games of all time started from these drawings you see. Games like Day of the Octopus, Lunatic College, The Royal Quest, Monkey's Bay, and that's just a few along with so many other great games. I've just checked the newspaper clip on the clipboard and I saw Martin almost falling off his balloon while trying to reach for a scroll. What could be in that scroll that was worth risking a life for? You're probably the last in this town to see the moment, whether in the newspaper clip or in real time. The whole island talked about it for a week, as you would expect, though. All speculation had one thing in common. They assumed that what was in the scroll must have been one of his recipes, and that only seems to be right. I now have reason to believe that before leaving our island, Martin spent some time developing what he considers to be the finest recipe by far. His luck wasn't all that bad, though, because guess where his scrolls landed? Among all the places on our island, it chose to land on no other than the jungles that cover the passive volcano where the Indian hunters live. Well, recently I've heard rumors that somehow it was found by the native Indians. I don't know whether or not that's true but I wouldn't want to personally venture into their land unless I really have to. The scroll is either there inside their village and impossible to capture or not and impossible to be found. In either case, it doesn't look like a promising business to me. Isn't it strange that no one yet has attempted to find Chef Martin's lost secret recipe? Ah, uh, you can't just simply walk into their sacred village and expect them to welcome you. As far as I know, and this is what I hear from my customers, the real key to having access to the native's village is their impossible to pass test of truth. You know what I'm talking about? That kind of test which is believed to be witnessed and influenced by the gods. So, when you pass the test, it means that the gods have helped you. It means that they really trust you. But all my customers describe the test as much too difficult that they've never seen anyone pass it before. 
So That's there's nothing now. left to do here. All right. And we've got the other hint that in order to get the secret recipe, we have to get uh, go to the hunter's village. Let's go to the alley. If we look at the cart the steel here, steel looks rusty. It might work again if I find a way to minimize friction. Uh, it won't budge. Let's check the bottles a and towel towels and some bottles. I can't reach them from here. So we need to move the cart somehow. And let's go in and talk to him again about the cart. Hello, William. Hey. What is it with that cart blocking the kitchen door? That damn rusty thing. That Steve, our cart boy, left it in an awkward position before the heavy rains last month. Now he says it's too rusty for him to move it. I didn't believe him at first, but this morning I tried with everything in me and it didn't move an inch. I think I can help, but maybe you can help me as well. So, what's your game now, Joyfest? Simple. I fix the cart, you let me take the salt and pepper. You never give up, do you? Fine, I tell you what, you fix that ugly cart for me and I won't be standing in your way. That's it for now. All right. What am I supposed So let's go outside. Let's talk to the ship captain. Hey. Hey, lad. How can I help you? I'm looking for the captain of the ship. You're talking to him. What do you need? I need to go to Kanta Island. Chief Martin's cooking festival, eh, lad? Wait, how did you know? Pack your stuff, lad. Our trip is the day after tomorrow. The day after tomorrow? But that's too late. I need to be there by tomorrow morning at most. The festival begins two days from now. No one is interested in being there before that. Why would you need to be leaving so early anyway? I'm applying for the cooking contest. I got to be there before the festival begins. I see. But I can't move the ship two days earlier because of one man's request. But Captain... Sorry lad, the date is set. Come on Captain, think about it. You will make more money if you operate the ship twice instead of once. I'd make more money if I charged you double for wasting my time. What were you going to do with your time anyway? Enjoy the look of the sea while smoking my pipe. <sighs> Since you can't take me to Kanta Island, perhaps you could help me find another way at least. I'm afraid you're wasting your time there because there is only one ship that moves from this island to Kanta Island, and that's my ship. I'm buying your ship. Ah, nice one. My ship ain't for sale. But since you're that desperate, I can consider selling you all the available spaces. You mean that I buy all the ship's seats? Exactly. I've got the small fortune of silver coins. Let's hear your price and finish this. You said silver? Ha ha ha. It's never easy to make a journey off the schedule, you know. You have no idea about the losses I'm going to bear for not serving my other destinations over the next two days. Can we just bypass Rhetorix and get to your point? Easy, lad. Although it'll be extremely difficult for me to depart today, I will do it for you for a very reasonable price. Only four golden pounds. Four golden pounds? But that's too much. Listen, lad, you want to go to Cantor Island so badly, and I'm giving you that by moving my ship a very long way for only one person. All I'm doing is asking for something very nominal in return. You don't expect me to take you for free, do you? Very reasonable indeed. That'd take only two months of hard work to raise that amount of money. Well, then you'd better start as soon as possible. So, have you considered lowering your price for the trip? 
The price I gave you is final. It's a take it or leave it offer. I'm gonna move on. Sure, mate. So he needs four gold pounds in order to get us to the island. And let's check the fishing net. No fishing net. It looks too worn in a few spots, but other parts of it look fine enough. It's we'll too try big to pick for it me. up. Perhaps a smaller size. We cannot, so we use the knife. Done. I've taken the usable part of the old fishing net. If we click the tools, the hammer might be useful. We'll get the hammer. And I never thought this old lifeboat could be fixed anyway. Let's get the old dripper. Uh, the dropper. Let's go in the restaurant. We use the dropper with the oil bottle. What a waste of Spanish olive oil! The dropper is filled now. And now we can use it on the cart. The wheels are oiled now. I should go and inform William. Hello, William. Hey. I have good news for you, William. The cart is movable now. Perfect. Look, you can go over to the table and pick whatever you want. I'll act like I'm not looking. That's the spirit. So we can take the salt and pepper. Great. And let's go to the booth on the right. This is the concept art picture we are A looking for. A vintage concept art drawing from the day of the octopus? Sweet! I must get that concept art drawn, but the boothmaster won't let me take it without winning against him first. So let's talk to the boothmaster now. Wow! Is that a carnival booth? That's right. You put one coin on the table. If you lose the game, I keep the coin to myself. If you win, you take it back with a prize of your choice from among the booth's stock. How do I win the game? I mean, what are the game's rules? It's simple. All you gotta do is build with the cards a pyramid matching the one you see in the image within 30 seconds. If you do it within the given time frame and your pyramid stands erect for at least 5 seconds, you win the game. Otherwise, you lose. That looks fairly easy. I bet that players often successfully make it. Um, I believe most players actually do succeed in this, don't they? Some of them do, others don't. Yes, yes, of course. But my point is, well, how many of them actually do win the game? It depends. It differs according to prevailing circumstances and factors. Factors? What factors? What the heck are you talking about? Many of them. They're numerous and overlapping. Some of them have to do with the player himself, others with external factors in his environment. Did you notice, as I do, that after all that, I didn't get a single useful piece of information? I know. I'm doing a good job. So let's play the game. Okay, let's play the game. We will lose. There you go. Time for my prize. What is it? What's happening? Hey! How could that have happened? It was steady just a second ago. Seems you weren't lucky enough. This isn't right. The cards were so steady, I assure you. Something went wrong. Hey, sorry my friend. Rules are rules. Rules, you say? We'll see about that. So he has clearly done something and we can see it if we look at the sword. It's so glazed that it reflects its surroundings. Wait, what's this that is reflected on its surface? Is that a magnet over there? I wonder why the operator would hang a magnet in there. So the cards are metallic and if we see the nail and use a hammer, the 
magnet drops. We can pick it up. I simply can't take it. If he notices what I did, he will refuse to play against me next time. If we talk to him again, he will look the ma he will uh, see the magnet and he will put it back into place and we will lose again. So there is no reason to stay here. Let's go here and while we're at it, let's use the hammer on the boxes. It worked. An empty ink jar. I doubt that I'll ever use it. And we got the ink jar. Now let's leave the town and go to the farm. Now let's get the horseshoe. I don't really believe that old lady's thing about horseshoes bringing good luck. But then, well, who knows? So let's leave and go back to the town. Now if we repl replace the magnet with a horseshoe, uh, we won't be able to, to do it from the beginning because it's not the same color. So if we try it... Huh! That horseshoe almost looks like a magnet! If only it were the right color! So let's leave and go to the captain and use the horseshoe on the paint bucket. Let's see what we're gonna get when we dip the horseshoe into the red paint. Look at that! It looks like a magnet! So let's go back to the booth and let's replace the magnet right now. Let's see how you will manage with a fake magnet! So we've got the magnet and hey now there. we will play Welcome the game again booth. and do we need Okay, let's play the game. Huh? What's the problem, booth master? Seems something isn't working. How did you? None of us did anything, right sir? I simply won the game and you will have to give me my prize for that. Fine. You win that cute teddy bear from my collection. I don't want your teddy. Okay, what exactly do you want? The concept art picture. But that one is original. Sorry, rules are rules, isn't it? <laughs> Fine, take your picture. So we get the concept art picture and off to the restaurant. <coughs> There you have it, your precious Day of the Octopus concept art picture. Wow, I can't believe you actually did it. What exactly did you do to win that game? I painted a horseshoe and actually it's a pretty long story. I see. Anyway, here's what you were promised. Please take care of it. Now I can exactly know the particulars of every content of the recipe. Amazing! So we've got the recipe and we can drag it into items. Let's go outside and into the alley again. We will do something that we will need later on. We can get all those things here. Let's hope nobody will notice the missing stuff. And if we look Weird at this name. one, I should probably look it up. We get a hint that we should look it up, so we use it with the encyclopedia. Let's see. Hmm. Interesting. According to a warning note here, it claims that mixing castor oil with Rogers blend, which is a popular chicken sauce, will produce a hypnotic blend that will induce sleep into the subject for a few hours. So this is it's castor the oil. Castor oil. The worst tasting and smelling oil. According to the cooking encyclopedia, it could also cause hibernation under certain conditions. 
and we will use those things together. This is an item that we will need later on in the game. We can't go anywhere right now, the library is closed. Let's leave the town and let's go to the native's village. Halt! Where are you going, pale face? I want to see your chief. A pirate in the land of Sons of the Sun. Interesting. Nice to meet you too, chief. Except that I'm a sailor, not a pirate. So, you're not a pirate. And how does a sailor spend his time? Well, true, I roam the seas in a ship, but... See? That's exactly what pirates do. Yes, of course, but... I think we've heard enough, Paleface. So, what brings the Paleface to the land of Sons of the Sun? So if we choose the third one... Cultural fascination! Isn't it a big waste of your great culture not to be known by many when the entire world has got to enjoy its overwhelming beauty? I must take time to explore the wonders of your superior culture and reveal them to the whole world! Very true, and well said. Seems pale faces are smarter than I thought after all. Yet, we cannot reveal to anyone the secrets of our great culture until they have passed the God's Test of Truth. And how does the test go? You will shoot an arrow at a very distant target board that even the most experienced of archers can't normally hit. Only those who are trusted by the Great Ones will receive their assistance to be able to hit the board. If the gods trust you, your arrow will successfully hit the target, and you will gain our trust. If the gods don't, your arrow will fail, and we won't allow you to wander around. The pale face should come to us, and let us know when he feels he's ready to take the test. I'm here to dance with you. We stopped dancing a while ago. And why's that, Chief? Because I... Lost my great staff of rain during one of our hunting trips. That's horrible news! I really wanted to dance! If you really want to, then you'd better find my lost staff. You told me you stopped dancing. Why? Because I... Lost my great staff of rain during one of our hunting trips. Where were you hunting when you lost the staff, Chief? In the western mountain jungles above the caves. Why would you take your staff as far as the western jungles in the first place? I never part from my staff. Never? Even when you sleep? Nope. Neither when I pee or eat. Never? Even when you pee? Nope. Neither when I sleep or eat. Never? Even when you eat? Nope. Neither when I pee or sleep. So what have you got for me when I come back with your lost staff? We will summon the Great Rain Dance and reveal the precious gift promised to the Staff Finder. Wow! I've never considered the possibility of summoning a dance to honor a Pale Face. To honor the Staff, Pale Face. What's the promised gift? The Great Golden Fortune Statue. Wait, did you say golden? Correct, golden. No one was ever disappointed with the statue. What makes you so sure the Goddess of the Sun exists at all? It's pretty simple. That's what I was told before reaching six years of age. What if I were your parent and told you otherwise? You're not. And you didn't tell me otherwise before becoming age six. Therefore, the goddess of the sun is the absolute unquestionable truth. Come again? 
How do I do the test of- You will shoot an arrow at a very distant target board that even the most experienced of archers can't normally hit. Only those who are trusted by the Great Ones will receive their assistance to be able to hit the board. If the gods trust you, your arrow will successfully hit the target, and you will gain our trust. If the gods don't, your arrow will fail, and we won't allow you to wander around. The Pale Face should come to us, and let us know when he feels he's ready to take the test. So let's take the test. I'm ready for the test of truth. Very well. Guards, for the test of truth. take the Pale Face to the archery yard. Of course, Go as you on, have Pale imagined. Face. And prove to us that the Great Ones trust We will you. fail. We use it on the target board. And oh, we miss my horribly. goodness, that's just insane. These people know too well that their test is impossible to pass without a miracle. No arrow in the board. No trust given by the Great Ones. And hence, no entry to our sacred village granted to the Pale Face. I'll be back later. Sure. So let's click the wooden bridge and we will go up to where the target is. The wood material of the target board looks surprisingly soft and easy to cut through with a blade. So we've got the hint, so we will use a knife. There. These holes will allow me to attach something to the board. And we will use the magnet, of course. A magnetic target board! Can't wait to see the fun. With the magnet in there, I'm halfway through to getting a homing arrow. I just need the right kind of arrow for this. So we're not ready yet. Because the arrow we get is uh, wooden. So we need to go to the town. And now the library will be open. And that's the solution to our... So we will continue in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. Have a great day.